Every day at Bakersfield College, our students are moving toward their goals. Why aren't you with them? Is it cost? Family obligation? Maybe you don't feel prepared for college life. The good news is we're prepared to help you. You have yet to realize how much help and support is waiting for you at Bakersfield College. Learn more now on Equity TV. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Equity Television. Equity TV is a product where we aim to show certain population groups that success through college and improving your life is possible if you put the effort in. And, and really, that applies to all of us. It even applies to people who have had incredible success in areas of life that we all could only dream about, like the NFL, which brings us to today's first guest. Uh, this is a guy who played in the NFL. This is a guy who served in the United States Marine Corps. This is a guy who applied for some jobs after he got out of the NFL and didn't have things work out. Why? Well, because he didn't get his education when he had the chance to get it for free. And that's something actually that we want to talk to people about today, isn't it, Jeremy? Oh, absolutely. Um, because you, you had to take some extra steps. But first, let's go back to the beginning. You're a big guy. You're talented. You're a senior at Bakersfield High School. Did you take school very seriously in high school? Well, I did and I didn't. You know, the thing about it is, is back then you really don't, you know, you don't put too much uh, precedence on your education. You think everything's about, especially as a student athlete. Um, you know, I had track and field and football, and I really focused on those areas because I wasn't really a strong uh, student, if you will. You know, I had some issues in school that I just didn't uh, understand. And it wasn't until I actually got to Bakersfield College that I was diagnosed with ADHD and dyslexia. You know, I don't, I, my memory's not all that great. I don't really, uh, it, I struggled, you know, because it would take me, twice as long to read a paragraph than would other students and then I felt like I was dumb and then you know of course the baby Huey came out you know these different names were called and and it was frustrating for me and so instead of trying to figure out the problems or figure out you know to, to uh, get the uh, the uh, the material down that was in class you know I'd rather punch someone in the face and go sit in the dean's office and so <laughs> I was kind of a troubled student as well but I know throughout uh, my 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 um, you know, experiences, if you will, I find out later, you know, a lot of the reasons I was so frustrated with school was because of these issues that I was having, you know, these, these, uh, these educational problems. But um, school is hard enough without having a learning disability of any kind. Oh, absolutely. You know, and especially for being an athlete, you know, I, I really put a more precedence on being an athlete than I did on education. And, uh, you know, later on in life, it really kind of bit me in the butt. And let's talk about that. So you come to BHS, or excuse me, you come to Bakersfield College, you do a bang-up job. Mm -hmm. I mean, you were, you were not only a great football player, but you also set some marks in track and field, correct? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Track and field was my first love, you know, the shot put in discus, and I believe to this day I still own the discus record at Bakersfield College, which, you know, it's kind of funny, like 20 years later I still hold a record, which is kind of crazy to me. Well, there's some other things there, but we won't go into that because this is really about education. And, um, you know, one of the crazy things, too, is that people don't realize about me is that, I was this far away from not making it to Arizona State University Why because I never took the SATs in high school. I never took the SATs or anything like that because I didn't know that was that was valued that much. And I said, well, I'm going to Bakersfield College anyways because I graduated high school at 17. I was still young, didn't want to leave home, and really didn't know what was out there. And so I actually, in order for me to get out of Bakersfield College and go on to Arizona State University, I actually had to get my degree. Oh, so you had to get an AS or an AA. I had to get an AA. And, and Arizona State was offering you the, the full plan, right? I mean, oh, you, I was, you were on scholarship. I was, yeah. That was, I was being recruited by East Coast schools. I was getting, I mean, I have, you know, shoe boxes. I wear size 16. I have probably three or four shoe boxes full of recruiting letters from high school all the way through junior college from all these Division I schools that were offering big money. And just to impress this upon the students that are watching and the student athletes that are watching, Physically, you're a masterpiece, Jeremy. How tall are you? 6'6". Six, six. And how much do you weigh? Well, currently about 282. <laughs> okay, but when you played... Oh, I was about, about the same weight uh, going into Bakersfield College. But you college. ran about a 5-second 40, I'm guessing? It was 4'9". My goodness. People uh, don't realize how scary that is. Like, uh, if we were in a 12-foot by 12-foot room, you could probably catch me in about 5 seconds. Le or less. <laughs> right, yes. Or less. Yeah, you were effective at stopping the run and all this stuff. You were highly desired out of BC, but... Despite having all those things going for you physically, mm -hmm. despite measuring up to other NFL defensive linemen, you had to get 
your associate's degree. Absolutely. You know, and it took me, I had to actually go, I think I had to go to summer school both times, you know, because I was only at BC for two years. I had to go to summer school, I think, yeah, both times. I actually literally had to pass my summer school class my sophomore year in order to go to Arizona State what University. What was going to happen if you didn't? I don't know. I don't know where I'd be right now. That's where, I mean, education is really the only thing that has given me all these experiences. If it wasn't for education, if it wasn't for me getting what I needed to get done in the classroom, I wouldn't have experienced the, the Division One, a national championship football game. I wouldn't have experienced being a second-round draft choice. I wouldn't have experienced going into the Marine Corps. All that stuff would have been for naught if it hadn't been for me really buckling down and pursuing and really getting my education. And... Um, yeah, I'm so thankful that Bakersfield College was there for me because if it wasn't for Bakersfield College, Bakersfield College was the catalyst for me to do all these things throughout my life. And it still is now that I'm an instructor there, but we'll get into that later. <laughs> yeah. I mean, people don't know the value of what Bakersfield College has given to me. I don't even think Bakersfield College knows what is they, the, the opportunities they've given to me. You know, I'm so grateful for them. No, and, and going back to this, because I have had teammates before, and I'm sure you did too, who are just like, man, I just don't do school. I don't like school. Mm -hmm. Was that your attitude in high school? And how did you find out at BC? that you had the issues that you had? No, absolutely. I've, I always try, you know, I'm always, I always give everything 100%. You right. know, people say, I'll give 110, 120%. I don't know what 110, 120% means. I, you can only give 100%. And I give 100% and everything, but I wasn't getting the marks that I thought I was deserving of, you know? I mean, it's just like, man, I'm really trying on this stuff, but I don't get it. You know, Especially for an athlete, because usually when you give 100%, you see gains. Oh, absolutely! If you're putting in that work and the effort, you see it. But with uh, with education, it was really it was it was it was frustrating for me. You know, to the point where um, I would try harder, but like I, I wasn't. You know, just because I couldn't remember a page. Some people have photographic memories. Not me. I have to read the page like three or four times, and I might remember the first sentence. <laughs> you know, so it was really tough for me. But um, you know, going back, I I just you know it was actually a godsend when they finally told me. You know. It was actually Coach Chudy. Yes, believe it or not, Coach Chudy was at Bakersfield College. Was my coach way back then. He said, "Hey, man, you're pretty smart. You know, you're pretty intelligent, but you know your grades aren't showing it. What's wrong? Have you ever been tested for learning disabilities?" I'm like, "What's a learning disability?" You this know? is like the softer side of Coach Chudy. Oh I don't yeah. This. Well, don't tell him I told you this, but uh, <laughs> yeah. you know. But the thing about it is, is like, yeah. He said, "Why don't you go get tested?" And so actually, I got tested my freshman year, and it was wow, it was amazing. You know, who would have thought like test anxiety could be so. Uh, a, you know, a, a devastating thing when you're taking a test, you know, because for me, I was more or less worried about the time than I was the problems, mm. you know. So if you go, OK, there's 50 word problems or 50 math problems here. You got, you know, an hour to do them. I got basically a minute and five seconds. But, you know, for me, it was really hard. Uh, obviously, a smart guy. Again, you're like, that's a minute and five seconds. Right. Yeah. So well, we know OK, well, I got to yeah. do this. And, and next thing you know, if two minutes con pass and I was still on the same question. All of a sudden, oh, I'm behind. So I struggle with the uh, with the academic side. But um, once I realized that I, you know, I wasn't dumb, I just had to take a little bit more time and being, you know, hyperactive and always wanting to go, go, go. I just need to sit down and focus a little harder. And it started to come to me. And once I started, you know, was able to take a little bit longer on my test, you know, talking with the instructors, letting them know, hey, look, I've got some issues here. You know, could you help me out instead of giving me an hour? Can I have an hour and a half? And really working with the instructor, or, you know, with the with the uh, with the professors, they, they they want you to learn. They don't want any students to fail. You don't get into into academics to fail students, and so no. they worked with me. And uh, once that happened, I mean, it was just like, oh my God, you are smart, and you can do these things. And education really became a a really a stronghold in my life at that point. So you no longer were afraid of school after that. You realized what you needed to do. Just like if you ran into an obstacle on the playing field, you'd watch film, figure out where your weakness mm -hmm. was. Right. And you worked at it. Absolutely. Right. You have to work. And, and, and one of those things is, you know, as, like as an athlete, you know, in order to get your bench press stronger, you have to work other other muscles of, in your body to make a stronger bench press. It's the same thing with education. You know, if you want to be a smart reader, hey, you got to do a lot of reading. If you want to be a great speller, hey, you got to read and do and work on spelling. I mean, it's all these you have to work at it. And for me, education was tough because it wasn't like I could just get in there and bench press, you know, something like that. You see results. But for me, having to sit there and actually read something and really study and focus, that was like I'd rather bang my thumbs with hammers, <laughs> right. you know. But, um, you know, now, you know, here I am, 38 years old. I mean, I look back and I see how much value is in an education. And I'm so fired up about it. Like, I can't go and throw the shot put 80 feet anymore. But you know what? I can still get degrees and education is huge. It, it is, and it's open doors. And something we're going to talk about um, in the next segment coming up is the number of closed doors you found after your NFL career is oh, over. Yeah. So we go to Arizona State. 
and uh, you did pass that class and things are going well. Um, what was the jump or the change in academics like? And can you imagine if you had gone to Arizona State right out of BHS? Oh, I couldn't. You know, like I said, I, academically, you academically, no way. You know, but at the same time, uh, like I said, Bakersfield College has always been there. It's always been that great stepping stone for me to go into bigger and better things. And, you know, al allowing me to be at Bakersfield College for those two years set the precedence for the next two years of my life at Arizona State University. And, you know, I was just so grateful. But, you know, as an athlete there, you know, you play in a, a national championship in the Rose Bowl in front of 102,000 people, including, you know, how many – four million or whoever watches the game on sure january 1st and then also playing in the sun bowl as well you know another big national game and um you know for me the biggest upsetting part of that whole chapter of my life was that i had never did get my degree oh wow you know that was like the one thing i'm like well I, you know i've got the nfl here looking at me i've got a million dollar contract you know i don't need to go to school i don't need education when did you start realizing though that it, that, that the nfl was going to come a knock and did you know in, when you were at bc did you have an idea well believe it or not a lot of people don't realize it but i actually tried quitting football at bc my freshman year i tried i actually walked off the field and uh in uh basically training camp if you will you know i just told you know, coach cower i said you know, our coach cower um uh, bowser hey you know what my family's struggling we don't have a lot of money you know i'm gonna go work and help support my family you know and, and this kind of thing and coach bowser was the one that said hey look dumb dumb you need to play football. You've got all the attributes you need. You can make it, you can make it to the NFL. You can be, you know, one of our guys, one of the less than actually, – it's actually one half of 1% of high school football players make it to the NFL. And Coach Bowser told me my freshman year that I could do it. Wow. So, again, another moment at Bakersfield College that kind of set a path for the rest of your life. Jeremy, when we, get, we come back, we're going to talk about what it was actually like in the NFL for you. And we're going to discuss more about why you wish you would have gotten your education when you had the chance for free. Mm -hmm. Arizona State wanted to give him that money. Please don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Equity TV after this.